Hi, it's Jen and welcome to my channel and it is my mission to introduce neuroscience as a mainstream tool for self-help. I really enjoy learning about depression in the brain because I lost my father to suicide and actually learning about the brain and the depressed brain versus the happy brain has really helped me to move on from that experience and learn that it can possibly be in my control how I feel when I gain a better understanding of the brain. Learning about how the brain is plastic and how it can grow and change gave me hope. And just the more I learn about the brain, the more empowered I feel. So I'd like to share that with you in this video today. In this video, I will begin to explain some of the neuroscience behind depression, hence the title, Neuroscience of Depression Part 1. You may have seen brain scans that look like this before. While I find these scans very eye-opening and validating for people with depression, they don't give a great explanation for what is really going on in the brain. Most neuroscientists would have a hard time explaining what is actually going on here because depression is expressed very differently in different people. My main goal through my video series on depression is to better understand scans like this. To begin understanding the depressed brain, we first need to look at some neuroanatomy. The first brain areas you need to know about are the hippocampus and the hypothalamus. You can see the hippocampus blue in this picture and the hypothalamus in red in this picture. And this shows how the hypothalamus connects to the pituitaries. The hypothalamus is on top and sends information to the pituitaries. So now that we know more about the neuroanatomy, we can dig into the teaching for this video. Extensive research has shown that people with, who have suffered depression and depressive episodes have a smaller hippocampus than people who have not experienced depressive episodes. And that the more depressive episodes a person has had, the smaller their hippocampus is. The hippocampus is responsible for holding memory and emotional information. So why is the hippocampus smaller in depressed subjects? One of the best theories looks at the stress response axis, also known as the HPA axis. HPA stands for the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. When stress occurs, the hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing factor, CRF, which stimulates the pituitaries to release adrenocorticotropin hormone, ACTH, which stimulates the adrenal gland on the kidneys to release glucocorticoids. Cortisol is the main glucocorticoid in humans. Normally this is a negative feedback system, meaning cortisol once released will usually signal to the hypothalamus to stop this process. Research has shown that this feedback system is compromised in 50% of people with depression, meaning high levels of cortisol have no impact on the feedback and thus the CRF is continuously released, leading to continuous release of ACTH and cortisol. It has been proven that cortisol can decrease the size of the hippocampus, so this HPA axis is a great explanation for why the hippocampus is smaller in people with depression since 50% of people do have this compromised HPA axis. Research has also shown that use of antidepressants can actually return the hippocampus in people who've experienced depressed episodes to a normal, healthy size. So this is a comforting fact to me to know that even if you've had a depressive episode and your hippocampus might have become smaller during that, that that damage is reversible and can be gained back through the use of antidepressants if you are open to that. In my next video in this series, I will look into how antidepressants are able to get the hippocampus to grow back to a healthy size. I will also look into how that regrowth of the hippocampus relates to mood and memory. Does regrowth of the hippocampus due to antidepressants really make the mood better and really make memory better? That's a question worth really looking into and I will share it with you in that next video. I'd also like to do another video about how high levels of cortisol affect the brain. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. Please like it if you liked it and share it with anyone who you think it would, would like to learn this information. Um, comment below what you thought of it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. All right, bye.